Hello everyone, this is Gorax. In today's video, we'll go over Chaos Shadow Lightning boss and both spender and free-to-play friendly teams that can do over 22 million damage without using any mythic equipment. Before we go over the teams, let's take a look at the boss skills as this boss is basically ancient battlefield boss with a little bit of a twist because obviously he will be getting stronger every rotation and as you can see most of these skills basically are the same as the ones that the boss in the uh, ancient battlefield has now you might think that the total damage bonus when he dispels our buffs is an issue but in reality it's not it's one percent damage increase per buff dispelled so he'll need to dispel like 200 buffs before he hits the full rotation and um, so basically despite me having at some fights 150 stacks uh, extra on the boss the damage did not go up significantly because the base stats of the boss and any bosses in Ch chaos shadow are really low so you know having a hundred stacks will mean the boss will maybe do a little bit extra damage and you'll see that during the fight so we'll go over the teams just a quick reminder about how our psychic core looks so if you mean radiance team you should have at least this finished by the time you will tackle the bosses uh, we're getting around quite a lot of um, solvent later on once we unlock vortex force so don't worry about that so this is where you will be um, and you should use five affinity bonus here to maximize your damage so as always, we will start with the top teams and we will move down. Remember, no mythic equipment on any of the heroes. Um, the placement here doesn't really matter except for one. You want your range, support or even damage dealer in the back with resistance. We need a lot of resistance, 270 around, 270 plus the 50 from uh, the affinity to be able to resist the stun the boss does. Because once we resist it, uh, the boss will go into backfire form where he has damage reduced and also takes 20% more damage. So that's really important. And I could place it like this, or I could place it like this as well as long as rose is somewhere in the back everyone else is safe uh, so let's do just that let's go back to the original placement so this is it this is the placement and here i'm using philandor philandor with um his his uh, exclusive artifact and i'm pretty much i'll be reusing the equipment all over the place that's what i've been doing so i'll be using the same sets and you will see what happens and in here uh, actually when i run this i didn't realize um that all of this is on 20 second rotation so i didn't need to build two haste sets to meet 18 seconds but i've done it i've done it anyway to show you that even if you do something like that it will work when it comes to skill timings Everyone is on default except for those two. And with Richard Speed penalty on a battle skill of Rose, we can't really time it perfectly. If you want to min max, you'll prop you'll need to manually cast those two skills. Uh, Garius shield just before the ultimate and Rose's attack penalty before uh, the single damage hit on our highest attack power hero. Um, so this will mitigate a lot of damage during this fight and the strategy is really simple I mean there's nothing really happening here and we have this damage crit here and also reminder you can find all the teams in the spreadsheet that is both in video description and in the pinned comment so if you play this fight you'll see that the fight is pretty simple uh, and the team is doing 66 million damage and um, so since this is our first time to see this fight i will stop it at some point and we will skip till the late so you can see that the stacks that the boss will get don't really matter so look at this at the moment the boss has no buffs right except for his own buff um so now he's got total bonus 200 percent and eight times one percent so that's eight stacks worth eight percent damage and he's already have 200 here right and he's doing no damage to our team look at this we're we're not taking damage the only damage that we will be taking is coming from um 
this skill that will hit our highest attack damage dealer and this since we resist in this skill uh, that stuns us the backline hero in our case rose is not taking too much damage so if you thought the rally team will not do well here because the boss will steal buffs and gain increased damage I wouldn't worry about that too much it's not really impactful and we'll see that once we get to more stacks as you can see here we are at 53 additional stacks and the boss is doing barely any damage we got that shielded we have attacked down so we're good and as i said these stacks don't really matter in the end so this high-end rally team is able to do over 66 million damage again utilizing mostly default damage on our damage dealers um, then we have another team without Philander. This team is doing around 56 million. As you can see, I changed the supports. I believe Rose and Garius are the best supports here because Rose grants us attack penalty and also she's range, so we can utilize her as the one taking the beating instead of uh, missing on damage. And Garius' shield, if you have Garius' staff and heal, is just amazing overall. Uh, but also Ardrev, even with Jillian, even with Catherine, like anyone here, basically, this team has no attack penalty and we're still able to survive the whole fight. Do 56 million damage and this is the equipment. So once again, this is full legendary team, so a full legendary artifacts to follow. If you don't have full legendary artifacts, this team will do way less damage, obviously, because this flute is huge. And the same idea here, basically, Ardrev will be tanking. Um, we don't have timings here, like, at all, really, because Ardrev will be also the one applying Witch's Remain through her ultimate, so the upkeep on that will be quite high. And if you remember here, we also use Rose to make sure we have Witch's Remain. If you don't have Rose here, you might consider playing, like, Sagamir and moving some damage dealer into the back, but you'll need resistance on that hero. So crit damage aura and everything here is very similar. This team, however, will get more stacks on the boss. So the boss will be hitting um, harder, but it should be all right. So if you see that, we're going to go through this. We do damage. The boss will dispel rally most of the time, but we have such a good upkeep on Lorenfield's ultimate that it will work just fine. And as I said, 55 sorry, 56 million damage is achievable with this team. Um, the next team is way lower on damage, so this is more <laughs> oriented toward me, so this is what I could run, basically. Huberg as damage dealer, followed with Hegio and um, well, because I don't have Lorenfield, I don't have Alton, I don't have Felto, I don't have any other choice than that. Uh, the equipment here has also dropped, okay, so for those of you who don't have these legendary artifacts, we're using three epic artifacts plus roots, and which is a remain, I believe you should have at least one dupe in season 3, this is not season 1, season 2, it's season 3, so the avail availability will be bigger. Uh, skill timings, we time, because we don't have Lorenfiel, uh, so we want our damage dealers to follow after Rose, and as you can see, Rose has ultimate first, applies which is remained, and we go with Hegio. Hegio's ultimate applies rally to uh, one random rally ally. Uh, and then we follow with Welby and Huberg. However, we don't want to time Welby. Um, Welby has also increased ultimate charge time uh, when he has rally and cast his ultimate. So we want him to pew pew as much as possible. Uh, we can run it totally full auto, which works as well. The damage difference is minimal. And you can see that in a spreadsheet, as you can see here, 32 million full auto compared to 30 on timers. Very similar results. Okay, and the fight is really simple. There's nothing much to show. He basically ancient battlefield, but way, way weaker. It's easier than ancient battlefield, really. Um, so the next team is going back to this fully stacked team with Filto this time around. So if those of you who have Filto, you can definitely use Filto and Filto will do similar damage to uh, Philander. Obviously, you can kick Alton and bring in either Huberg and Philander as well. That will work. And again, you can see that I'm shifting this supports around and 
Um, this is basically the equipment I used here. Again, when you bring Ardref and you don't have a range, um, Rose, for example, you could play Ardref and Rose here as well. But if you don't have Rose, you will use Ardref as the one applying, which is Remain. And we're going to go full auto. Okay, full auto and 64 million damage again. This is this is why, once again, I think these bosses are a little bit too weak, especially in Season 3, because we'll be doing a lot of damage without even paying attention. And remember, no mythic equipment, so this damage can go up. If you're a rally main, if you adjust your timings, etc., you can definitely pop some good numbers here. And as you can see, a simple rotation, everything on auto, just want to hit with this. You could obviously wait with damage dealers until... Uh, Jillian resists, then the boss takes 20% more damage. So that's another improvement you can do, right? So he's in the backfire state now. If we cast an ultimate during this state, we will do a lot of more damage to the boss. And that's the idea behind this team. Let's go over the next team. Um, so here is an aura team. Finally, as you can see, fully stacked aura team. Uh, we, we can see the equipment. So as you can see, everything is legendary here. Uh, Pretty much the same sets on every hero that we use, just different artifacts because this is a different team. Skill timings, totally auto. Ideally, again, you want to cast Rose's ultimate followed by the aura team to utilize the most damage. We're using attack aura because we're not really, really uh, worried about surviving here. There's so much potential with this team. And while it's doing only like 50 something million you can easily get higher here with proper proper equipment and skill timings but since you know most of us don't really care about the timings or don't know how to set them up i'm trying to do this and rotation is still very simple <laughs> so basically nothing nothing happening here uh, the boss will have less stack so he will do even less damage uh, so don't need to worry about it so that's 52 million fully stack aura team so now we're gonna remove as you can see, we're going to remove Linkus, who I think is the weakest legendary for Aura. And we're going to bring in more damage. And we're going to use Fioheim with Envoy's Wing. And she can do a lot of damage. As you can see, 50 to 52 million damage. Again, rotation, uh, nothing here. And the fight looks basically the same. Okay, the fights will be really simple. No need to special placement, etc. So yeah, let's not waste time. Let's not show that during the video. You can watch my whole live stream when I was going over everything that was happening. Uh, so now we drop. We drop our exclusive Aura Hero and we can see, yeah, the damage is falling. When I added Linkus here, it was even lower. So don't bother with Linkus. The Alpha is the man. And obviously the huge gap here between the exclusive hero and the epic one compared to exclusive hero here and the legendary ones here. Um, so equipment wise, we're going free to play friendly with just one legendary artifact. I mean, season three, come on, guys. Um, if you don't have that, you can put crown, but you lose like 20% damage as well. So as you can see, low uh, artifacts, Garius without staff, and we are still able to survive the whole fight. Uh, so this is a really budget friendly team if you have Diantha. But worry not, if you don't have Diantha, there are other options, uh, which I'll show right now. So Karif is also doing a lot of damage. Karif is quite good, don't get me wrong. Um, so another option, 22 million, totally, totally low uh, rarity. No Witches Remain, as you can see, no Hourglass. We're just basically pitting five heroes that can do a little bit of damage. We do, however, have a skill timing due to the... Narzilla applying the defense down, so we need to, her to go faster, go fast. Then we follow with our other heroes, so Karev first to apply 20% attack up for uh, Fioheim. And Garius, we need to make sure we are full HP before the boss's ultimate. That's quite important, so you might have eventually um, playing on manual at the end of the fight. And the team does have issues surviving the last minute that's that's the issue here we don't have shield and uh, so yeah we will be struggling but we can still do over 22 million damage without mythic equipment worth mentioning again uh, this team can go over that but there are better teams as well so if you have ardref 
you can use her instead of Quarion. This will also mean you need to shift your formation. As you can see, we are using the damage dealer at the back and Ardriff is the one using um, the crown. And once we put this equipment with Rascal Slingshot, Narzilla is doing quite a lot of damage. And this is why the team's damage has gone up to 28 million. And again, nothing really spectacular happening here in the fight. And the last team, the 10th team, is a rally budget team. Uh, equipment wise, I only put roots on a uh, Welby. If you don't have roots, you can prop you can put eyeball of the giant here, then slingshot here, and just anything here, basically, like even the attack speed artifact, the chalice, which is quite good on Tathlin. Um, but yeah, same equipment, same idea, skill timings, nothing, totally default, and the team can do 26 million, still better than this team, so if you have one of these teams and you really want to hit just the 22 million, you might consider using them. And again, there's nothing, nothing really happening here. Uh, the team will have a little bit of survival issues again because we don't have Garius staff, so no extra HP basically, just the heals. But once Ardrev gets to 10 stacks, the damage is really mitigated as well. We can run defensive aura 30% as well to keep us alive. And if you really struggle, you can put extra HP on your heroes, at least the one that is dying. So yeah, this is this is the boss basically. Nothing spectacular, nothing hard, really. Um, you don't really need to worry about the buffs as well. If they could dispel, the boss gets a tiny bit of extra um, damage, but it's not really significant. You can't see that. And yeah, so once again, make sure you have access to my spreadsheet that will help you tremendously. You can find all the previous challenges here. Uh, with all the teams, auras that I used, and some notes as well. So this will be really handy for you going forward. And also uh, remember that you can rewatch my live streams where I go in depth. You can see the whole process of me testing these teams as well. So two more bosses to follow, and hopefully they'll they'll all be done before Friday, where we can actually test it in the game live. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you for watching, stay safe, bye!